Welcome back to my fitness and nutrition podcast. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. If you're coming back, thanks for your support. My name is Adamir. I'm your host. We're on part three of our common nutrition question series, and this week we're covering questions eight through 12. So if you've been with me for the past few weeks, I hope you've been getting some value out of these. And if you haven't, go ahead and go back and listen to them. They're available at any time for you. So once we're done here, I really suggest you go back and get the first half of these questions answered for yourself. Um, while you're there, go ahead and hit subscribe, like, follow my page, follow my podcast, share it with whoever you think can get some value out of this. Uh, tag me at Coach Adamir. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, please leave a review as well. That actually helps me in the organic search and to get my name out there. Um, I really appreciate and would love your support. So, like I said, we got eight, nine, ten, eleven, five questions, because one of them's a two-parter. So we'll get going on these. If you're taking notes, great. If not, I hope you remember it all. All right, here we go. Question number eight. Does the paleo diet live up to the hype? Mostly yes, but not for the reasons you think. The popularity of the paleo diet has grown a lot over the years, and it's probably one of the most popular in the world, right behind keto, right behind Whole30, gluten-free, vegan, things like that. And the paleo diet, what it is, um, it's really meant to mimic our ancestors' way of eating, right? Before farming became a thing, before we were able to have dairy products, grains, refined sugars, potatoes, salt, uh, all those highly processed foods that we now have so readily available, that's what the paleo diet does. It tries to mimic everything before that. Um, that would be you know, early man, early civilization, like 10,000 BC, right? That's the time we lived in caves. We collected berries, nuts, fruits. We were that hunter-gatherer civilization, right? We used stone tools, tools made of bones, uh, axes, spears, things like that. We hunted birds, we hunted wild animals. So we focus more on food that was available to us through the earth, whether we caught it, we gathered it, we trapped it, we fished it, whatever it was, that's what was available to us and that's what we ate. So that's what that diet tries to focus on, kind of mimicking a lot what our bodies are used to. And for the most part, I really like it just because it, it focuses on eating whole non-processed foods, which is what we really need to be doing. Whole non-processed food, food that comes from the ground, food that comes from the water, earth, trees, things like that. Anything that we can eat that we don't necessarily have to go to a grocery store to find, all right? So as much as I like it and as much as I think it works for a lot of people, I also think it can work negatively for some people. Um, a lot of us do have certain dietary requirements that if we cut out certain food groups, we may end up with a nutritional deficiency or just not function correctly we may have allergic reactions to things we may just like i said not function properly right you, you remove an entire food group it's hard to say how the body's going to react all right so the reason i think this diet works well a lot for people and really only works almost immediately is because of the calorie deficit you put yourself in by taking away those food groups um just like removing alcohol or like removing carbs or just sugar or little things like that. Once you remove a group, you're also removing those calories. And for the most part, you're not replacing it with anything else, which is good, but it doesn't teach long-term eating habits that will make this a sustainable diet. All right. Um, like I said, I personally like the approach when it comes from staying away those foods, staying away from those foods. So, Definitely give it a try, look into it, research it, see if you can maybe do a little bit of paleo here and there and kind of dabble in it and see what works for your body and what doesn't. Because um, at the end of the day, you want to change your eating habits and not follow a strict plan because um, that's what becomes unsustainable. All right. And then you happen to just slip back into your previous habits and forget everything you learned. So instead of just picking a certain diet and following it forever, Maybe pick parts of diets that work best for you and work best in your life that you that you know you will be able to sustain over the long term, okay? All right, question number nine. Um, this one I get a lot, actually, and um, 
it's hard to give like a you know exact answer on this but I'm gonna do my best here okay so number nine should I do a detox or a juice cleanse my answer sure um, will it really do much for you probably not um, the most popular detox diets and juice cleanses don't actually remove toxins or really lead to any fat loss um, so you know there's your answer I guess um, you know many of us have become aware of how our modern lifestyles have affected our nutrition our sleep our stress levels environmental factors affecting our health as well right so that brings us to the popularity of these juice cleanses of these detox diets now what usually happens with that is that the process that your body does when you eat fruits when you eat vegetables is actually cut out by you doing the juicing right so you've actually removed a lot of the fiber the nutrients the minerals that come in the meat of the fruit and the vegetables that now your body doesn't have right um it doesn't clean out toxins because you're actually bypassing your body's natural detox system right detoxes and cleanses um they're protein deficient they're extremely low in caloric energy they cause unhealthy blood sugar swings right if you drink a lot of juice without any of that fruit it's literally just like injecting sugar into your bloodstream it's a huge insulin spike right um, you can cause gi tract dysfunction if you're just having juice and cleanses pass through there without you know something a little more solid kind of cleaning up on the way through you're going to get dysfunction and this can also lead to yo-yo dieting right sometimes you'll do a juice cleanse and then you won't for a week and then you'll do a juice cleanse then you won't for a week it just doesn't really translate into anything sustainable that you're going to be able to really lose weight or really change your habits or make a change that is going to last and be permanent um now there's other things that you can do instead of a juice cleanse right just eat a couple fruits a day handful of vegetables each meal snack on vegetables it's really simple you know they're they make it so easy when you go to the grocery store there's containers of fruit already cut up for you there's containers of vegetables already ready to eat it's a little more expensive but it's a lot easier so if that's what's stopping you something that makes it easier to eat fruits and vegetables go spend a couple extra dollars change your eating habits change your health and you're not going to complain about those extra dollars anymore eventually you're going to start doing it yourself because you're going to realize I should just be doing them. I should just be doing this myself. All right. Do sleep habits and stress really affect nutrition? Yes. Um, I know a lot of you don't want to believe that, <laughs> but stress and lack of sleep really affect your performance, your recovery, your body composition, your mental health, your wellness, everything. The effects do vary from person to person. Um, and so will the sleep strategies and the stress management strategies, but at the end of the day, doing some of these will always help, all right? There's ways to improve um, in these aspects of your life. All you need to do is change a couple of behaviors around sleeping, all right? So I'm gonna give you a couple of pointers here, things that have helped me in the past, things that I know have helped my clients in the past, um, that'll help you get better sleep, recover better, you'll just feel, you know, more, clarity throughout the day less groggery more energy groggery wow <laughs> less groggy throughout the day and definitely have more energy throughout the day as well um so a couple of things here that i do create a sleep routine um you know whenever you know it's time to get to bed if you have a set time that you know you should be going to bed start winding down for the night turn off the tv maybe read a book check in with what you have to do for tomorrow, get your clothes ready for tomorrow, get your food ready for tomorrow, uh, take a shower, brush your teeth, whatever you have to do before you get to bed, start doing that maybe an hour before bed to create a routine for yourself so you know, okay, if I have to be in bed by 10, around nine o'clock, I'm gonna start to wind down and start getting my things ready for the next morning so that I can be in bed stress-free, ready to sleep and get as much recovery as possible. That being said, if you're gonna create a um, routine like that, make sure it's a regular sleep schedule as well. 
like I said, I use 9 and 10 o'clock as an example. If you go to bed later, if you're a night owl and you like to go to bed at 12, 1 o'clock, start winding down around 11 or 12. That's fine. I'm not telling you to go to bed early. I'm just saying go to sleep at the same time every night. Same routine every night. That way your body gets adjusted. It knows and it just says, okay, this is my recovery period. I'm going to use this time as much as possible to maximize my recovery. All right. Another thing, limit your alcohol and caffeine intake, especially late in the afternoon or evening. So four or five o'clock, especially after five o'clock, um, even if you go to bed later, caffeine and alcohol, it, it's really tough to get a good night's rest after that. If you drink on the weekends and you wake up the next morning hungover, you understand what I'm talking about. You know that sleeping after drinking is not the best sleep in the world. It's restless, it's uncomfortable, you have a headache, you just don't feel good. So you're not gonna rest, your body's not gonna recover, you're just gonna feel shitty the next day. All right, so don't do it. Don't drink a cup of coffee before uh, bedtime either. I know a lot of people drink tea, make sure it's not caffeinated. Even 50, 60 milligrams of caffeine can affect you. And if you're caffeine sensitive, even worse. Next one, choose a couple of de-stressing activities before you, you go to bed. Like I said, turn off the TV, read a book, listen to an audio book, um, put your phone away, write in your journal. If you live with someone, uh, speak with your spouse, have a conversation with them before bed, talk to your kids before bed, put them to bed, read a book to them, talk to a friend, do something that you're not mindlessly putting your mind to something and then just shutting off for the night. Do something meaningful, something productive, something that's gonna add value to you before you go to bed. Next one, make the room as dark as you possibly can and as comfortable as you possibly can. If you like to sleep in fresh, cool weather, make sure the warm is fresh and cool, or the room is fresh and cool. If you like warm weather, make sure it's nice and cozy in there. Don't sleep in an uncomfortable environment. Make sure you're comfortable so your body can comfortably recover for you and do all its recovery processes that it does along with keeping the room dark keep the room quiet close your windows or if you have to have your windows open maybe wear earplugs you know I, I don't know how else to make the room quiet besides closing the doors closing the windows and shutting everything off right if you have soundproofing great more power to you even better i'm jealous i'm envious of you i love that kind of sleep um, and then last thing you know these all these things leading up to sleep during sleep waking up make sure it's a soft alarm not some crazy blaring annoying alarm that you just want to turn off and you don't want to ever listen to again you don't need those loud buzzing ones something nice and calm to gently bring you out of a uh, restful sleep okay so those are things for sleep. Those are things that are gonna help us with um, sleep management. Now when it comes to stress, this can definitely be a little more, a little bit more challenging because um, stress isn't necessarily always a bad thing. You can always have a healthy balance of it in your lives, all right? So too much stress, we can harm our health, our physical health, and our mental health. But some of that stress can also be positive for us, you know, keeping us focused, making sure we're meeting deadlines, making sure we're working to our full capacity, making sure we're at the top of our game, right? Those stresses when we have deadlines, those stresses when we know you have a client that you have to, um, you know, fulfill their needs. It, it, it's stressful, but it puts you in um, fight mode, right? It puts you in a mode where you have to work harder to get those things done. So you have to find a good balance in that stress management because of the way it can affect your mind, your body, your behavior. It could even affect your interactions with your loved ones, your coworkers, your clients if you work with people, if you work with kids, it can affect your interactions with them. It just, it has such a tremendous power on us that we need to learn how to manage it so that it doesn't take over our lives and permeate into everything that we do. All right, so we need to form habits to give us an outlet that will allow us to de-stress. All right, and then put us in that quote unquote recovery zone. All right, we have a lot of stress diminishing habits. Meditation, right? Sit in silence for 10, 15 minutes, maybe even five in the morning, midday or at night before bedtime. 
yoga. Um, if you have a local yoga studio, go try the yoga. If you don't want to go to a studio because you've never done yoga and you may be a little embarrassed or you're just, you know, I don't want you know, do that in front of everyone, then take a class on uh, YouTube. Find a, a online program that you can just watch the videos and practice yoga at home. Another thing that um, really helps and that I think a lot of us really need to do and have really forgotten is spend more time in nature. We're beings of earth, you know, we're meant to be outside, we're meant to be in the sunshine, we're meant to breathe fresh air. We're not meant to be in a box hidden from the world. So as much as you can get outside and absorb natural energy, please, please, please go do it. I promise you're going to feel better. People always say they go out for a walk in nature and, you know, they, they feel rejuvenated. You can go for a walk around the block. You don't have to necessarily go in the middle of the woods or find like a beautiful pasture or hill. It's not about that. It's about being outside, just reconnecting. Stand outside, walk around the block, take your dogs out, take your kids out, listen to the birds, see the squirrels running across the telephone line. Little things like that to remind you that things aren't as bad as you make them out to be or as your brain is making them out to be. All right. Another thing, if you have pets, snuggle. <laughs> I uh, I have a French bulldog. Um, I also have a poodle, and man, I tell you, hugging them or just you know petting them, being close to them, it it it's something about it. You just release that stress. It's it's calming. It's peaceful. So if you have pets, snuggle a pet. If you don't have a pet, and you can, I highly recommend go getting one. A dog. Of all out of all of them don't anyways <laughs> um, a couple other things here listening to music uh, calming music relaxing music obviously don't be you know listening to crazy loud fast up you know hype music you don't need that if you're trying to relax you know I, I like to listen to some classical music sometimes there are uh, different kinds of playlists on Spotify and Apple that you know you just look up relaxing music playlist and it'll give you a lot of different types of genres that you can listen to that are just very peaceful very calming you can just sit listen read a book take a walk in nature while listening to that little things like that all right um along with meditation deep breathing exercises are good so you can look those up um there's a couple techniques where you, you can take big deep breath in through your nose count for four seconds hold it in for four seconds and then exhale for four seconds and you repeat that a few times um, and that kind of helps slow your heart rate down recenter you slow your uh, mental processes down and just give you a little bit of a, a respite from all your stress all right if there's anything else that you like to do like a hobby something that you know painting singing writing even just reading if that helps you calm down do that doesn't necessarily have to be these things on the list uh, oh one more thing how could I forget <laughs> sheesh exercise uh, take a walk take a hike um, do some squats push-ups lunges sit-ups you know do 15 20 minutes of it it doesn't have to be an hour hour and a half two hours like my crazy ass 15 20 minutes of just a couple movement um, movements that you can do freely at home will definitely help release and calm some of that stress all right question number 11 we're on the home stretch right here uh, 11 and 12 they're together so we'll start with part one how should I eat to get six-pack abs man popular question um, I think everyone asked me this how do, how do I get a six-pack you know and we're doing ab workouts they're like is this gonna help me get a six-pack is this gonna help me get a six pack? What about this one? Guys, abs are built in the kitchen. That's the follow up question to this, all right? So yes, abs are made in the kitchen, all right? Now, first thing I wanna do though is explore whether a six pack is worth the trade-offs to actually acquire it, all right? So I know this is a very popular question because I, I don't know, I think it's just everyone's had this desire to have a six pack for since I've been aware of it. Um, it's just a thing <laughs> to look fit. You need a six pack. 
but that's not true, all right? I'll tell you that right off the bat. You don't need a six pack to be considered in shape and fit, all right? Please don't listen to social media. Please don't listen to anyone out there that tells you that that's the only way you look good, all right? And all those guys that advertise and all those women that advertise that you can look like them in 30 days, don't buy it. it it's, it's really hard to do, all right? So when I talk about the trade-offs, this is what you're gonna have to understand and accept if you really want to have a six pack, all right? It's gonna take a lot more work than you probably realize. If you really wanna get to that level, if you're male, your body fat percentage is gonna have to be under 10%. Females, under 20%. Possibly even under 15%, all right? Just to really get that visible cut and see the six pack see the abdominals right there you really need very little to no body fat in order to see that and the biggest three things that you're going to have to take out in order to accomplish this goal is remove alcohol processed foods and your desserts all right so i know alcohol is a hard one i get that a lot i tell people all the time even just when people ask me about belly fat, not even six pack. You know, I tell them, have you removed alcohol? And they're like, oh no, you know, man, I can't do that. All right, then you're not gonna get a six pack. Processed foods, if you like to go to the grocery store and you're not only eating whole foods, you know, you're eating the processed, like crackers, bread, things that, are, things that are made in the factory, basically, you're not gonna get there either. And then desserts, this basically being your sugar, right? you're eating sugar, you're not gonna get a six pack. All, all three of those turn into glucose and fat in your body. So putting them in is gonna severely limit or maybe even completely eliminate the ability to lose all that body fat, all right? Now, cutting out those things, think about your lifestyle. Think about going out with friends, going out with family. You know, it's, it's gonna be a real challenge when you're out there. Um, even if you're not out to eat, if you're just out hanging out with friends, you may be on a strict meal plan and have to say, hey, hold on, I gotta eat real quick. Or they may be out eating and you can, you're gonna say, oh, I, I can't have any of that. You guys enjoy, I'm just gonna sit here and drink my water. There are people that do that, and if that's your goal and you really wanna accomplish that, by all means, go for it. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just telling you that it's extremely difficult. And so those people that have six packs, I applaud you. And I applaud every single person that pursues that because it, it does take a lot of sacrifice and it does take a lot of work, all right? If you're up for it though, you're gonna need to follow a couple of these steps at least, at least 95% of the time, all right? You don't have to be 100% perfect but you have to be A plus perfect. You're almost perfect, right? You're just beneath that perfect level, okay? So first things first, you're gonna have to eat protein and veggies in every single meal. Easy enough, most of us have protein and vegetables in our meals. You're just gonna have to really incorporate it a lot more and incorporate a lot more protein based on your height, weight, goals, and things like that. If you need help with that, reach out, I can help you. All right, but proteins and veggies, minimize your carbohydrates. Um, and when I talk about carbohydrates that we minimize, those are your starchy carbohydrates. Those are the ones I talked about in last week's episode. Bread, pasta, um, potatoes, those, those are gonna be super minimized. You can still have them, but I'd rather, if you're going for the six pack abs route, potatoes are gonna be probably gone and you're gonna replace those carbs more with like brown rice and things like that or quinoa all right um you're also going to want to include healthy fats in all your meals your avocados nuts olive oil coconut oil things like that you need them in order for you to really function and for your body to use that fat to metabolize and get rid of the bad body fat all right uh small amount of carbs only after your workouts Right, so like I just said, you're still gonna want some of those carbs, like those starchy carbs, but only after you work out or right before you work out. You know, you're never gonna want it for dinner 
or for um, you know lunch or anything like that. If you work out in the morning, do it right after your workout or just before your workout so you can burn that, okay? And then you're gonna increase your exercise, all right? It's not only your exercise intensity, but your exercise frequency, all right? So if you're exercising two to three times a week, great. You're in shape, you're maintaining your goals. Now let's go four to five times a week, maybe even six, all right? Because you're gonna have to constantly be keeping that metabolism burning so that you never have a calorie surplus and you're always in a deficit, all right? And then going back to our very first question, you're gonna need at least eight hours of sleep, okay? So eat protein and veggies for every meal. Include healthy fats at all your meals. Small amount of carbs, especially your starchy carbs. You're going to minimize those. In, uh, increase your intensity and frequency to five to six times a week for your workouts. And then last, get at least eight to nine hours of sleep. All right, so it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you pair it with your lifestyle and what you do on a daily basis, take those things into consideration if a six pack is your goal. All right, and a follow-up to that, like I said earlier, abs are made in the kitchen. So I've had several clients ask me, hey, coach, if abs are made in the kitchen, then why the hell should I be doing any ab exercises? That's a good question. I mean, I usually get a dirty look when it comes to the core work section of our hour. <laughs> but while it may seem that ab workouts are a waste of time, if you consider that abs are made with other habits, it doesn't mean that those should be ignored, all right? They're not meant to make a six pack grow, right? They're not meant to make your muscles bigger. It's really impossible for crunches or sit-ups or leg raises or side crunches or planks or anything like that to grow your abdominal muscles. It just doesn't happen. Those, those muscles aren't built for growth. They're built for protection. They're just built to be strong to protect our um, our vital organs, right? So what those exercises are good for is for strengthening your core. And what that does is it improves your posture, it improves your balance, all right? It's your power center right there. It holds you upright. And if you have a weak core, you can hinder that. If you have a weak core, you can have lower back pain. You may not be able to um, do certain things with full strength, right? And it, if you have a stronger core, not only will it reduce that back pain, but it'll also increase your flexibility, all right? So getting close to that six pack is not gonna be impossible if you really follow an intense workout program, all right? Proper nutrition, limit your intake of the wrong foods, sleep well, you can still achieve that lean body look. Maybe not get complete six pack, but if you try all these things at least 80 to 90% of the time, you're gonna get pretty damn close. All right. Well, all right then. That wraps up today's episode, you guys. We answered five more questions. We have four more left. So I hope you really stay tuned for next week's episode to wrap up our four-part common nutrition question series. Um, thanks again, you guys. I really appreciate your time, um, your listening. And I hope that you take some value out of this. If you know anyone that needs to hear this, please share this episode with them. Tag me on Instagram. Tag me on Twitter. Follow my podcast, follow my page, wherever you do your social media, and you can stay up to date with me for new episodes and any new information that I put out. All right, so again, I hope to, um, I guess, see you guys here, or I don't know. Anyways, talk to you next week. All right, as always, go have a great week, love yourself, and go be the best version of yourself. Bye, guys. Thank you.